What's up guys? Welcome to Senior High Online. We're so excited that you're joining us this evening as we continue to talk about family and how important our relationships are. Let's dive in. When I was in middle school and high school, I had a friend named Jordan, and I loved going to Jordan's house because he always had the nicest, newest stuff. His parents always bought him the nicest gaming systems and the newest movies on DVD, if you remember what that is. So I loved going to Jordan's house to hang out, and in contrast, my family was more conservative with their money. My dad was a teacher and my mom worked from home, and so we didn't always buy the nicest, newest stuff. And some of you might have felt that tension in your life. Maybe it seems like another family has all the cool stuff and you guys don't. Or they have it all together and your family does not. But as we've talked about over the last few weeks, there's no perfect family. And one of the most important things that we can do is surround ourselves with people outside of our family who are also there to encourage us and build us up in our faith. And we're going to look at two stories from the Bible today. One's a story about a family, David's family. And another story is of Jonathan's family. So David's family was far from perfect. He had a dad who actually didn't acknowledge him. And there was a prophet named Samuel who receives a word from the Lord that there's going to be a king that comes from David's family. And so Samuel goes to David's house and talks to Jesse, David's father. And Samuel says, hey, bring out all your sons so I can look at them and see which one is going to be king. And so Jesse brings all of his sons out except for David. I can imagine how much that would hurt David, that um, he would be left out, that he wouldn't even be considered for king. And then there's Jonathan's family. Jonathan's family was far from perfect as well. His dad was power hungry. His dad's name is Saul, and Saul always wanted to be in control and always wanted to be in power. And so we're going to see how these two stories come together. And through a series of circumstances, David actually starts to rise to be king. And he's not quite king yet. And Saul knows that David is about to be taking power from him. And Saul gets angry about that. And check out what happens. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David. And he loved him as himself. They became friends. And from that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. So through this tension between David and Saul, and Saul wanting to be in power, and David trying to rise to be king, Jonathan was stuck in the middle of that. Jonathan, being Saul's son, was probably very conflicted about what to do. He didn't want to betray his dad, but he also knew that he became friends with David and wanted to protect David. And actually, Saul, over time, tried to kill David. Check out what happens. Saul told his son Jonathan on all the attendants to kill David. But Jonathan had taken a great liking to David and warned him, My father Saul is looking for a chance to kill you. Be on your guard tomorrow morning. Go into hiding and stay there. I will not go out and stand with my father in the field where you are. I'll speak to him about you and tell you what I find out. How cool that this friendship between Jonathan and David actually turned into a friendship where Jonathan was protecting David, where Jonathan wanted the best for David. And then actually, Jonathan ends up convincing his father not to kill David. Look at this. Saul listened to Jonathan and took this oath. As surely as the Lord lives, David will not be put to death. As his friend, Jonathan cared about David. Jonathan cared about his well-being. He cared about how God was going to use David as king. And that's a kind of friend that we all need. He also looked out for David's well-being and future. He didn't just see David as a friend now. He saw what David was going to become. And so he looked out for his well-being now, but also for his future. And he also saw potential in David's life. That Jonathan saw what David was capable of 
Jonathan saw what David would bring as a leader, as a king. And so he saw that potential, and because of that, he protected him. And we all need friends like that in our lives. Our families are great. We need those support systems. We also need people far removed from our family that can build us up, see potential in our life, and care about us. And so my question for you is this. What, what people are you surrounding yourself with outside of your family that have those same qualities, that care about you, that care about your future, that see your potential? Because we all need friends like that in our lives. Because it's easy to look at other families and say, man, I wish what they had, and lose focus of the fact that we need to be in our families, caring for our families, and that the people around us outside of our families can help us do that. So that we don't get distracted by the negative things. We don't get distracted by the imperfections of our parents or our siblings or ourselves. That we have people building us up, encouraging us to move forward. And actually, in Hebrews, it talks about this. It says this, And let us consider how many, how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. We need people around us. We need other Jesus followers that are encouraging us, lifting us up to love and good deeds, which means that when we go to our families, when our families are in crisis or they're arguing, or we're seeing impatience rise up in ourselves. We have other people around us to redirect our focus, to redirect how we see our family. And that we shouldn't give up hanging out with those people. That the more we hang out with those people, the more that those people rub off on us, and then the more we're able to interact with our family in a way that's loving and caring and patient. And so for you, who are those people in your life? Maybe you don't have those people right now. So maybe you need to start praying about that. Ask God to bring people into your life that love you and care for you, who are always there for you, who see beyond your imperfections now and see the potential that you have for the future. And I know for me, I've, I've had a couple of those people in my life, people who are willing to call out stuff that's not good for my future and who are willing to hold me accountable and to see the imperfections in myself and call me out on those things. And so for you tonight, my challenge is, who do you need to let into your life? Maybe you need to start opening up your circle a little bit. Maybe you need to start looking outside of your family and say, God, who can be that person in my life? And start building a friendship with them. And the other thing we need to do is that we need to be connected to our church family. We need to be showing up on Wednesday nights, whether it's on Zoom or in person, and keep digging into those relationships. We need to show up with our families on Sunday mornings if your family comes to church. But we need to have that community around us, and we need to worship God together so that we're encouraging each other in our faith on a regular basis. So I know this is short, but I hope that you guys have a good discussion about how to do this in your own life. Until next time, see you later.